Module 8, Active and Collaborative Learning In this module, you will learn about an active learning approach within education for sustainable development. With a focus on collaborative learning. Both terms are umbrella terms that are used and interpreted in many different ways in scientific discourse. Right. But what does this mean for our everyday practice in school? Emma, that is a legitimate question. I would immediately start with the wonderful work of Cynthia Brame from Vanderbilt University. She has summarized briefly the essentials of active learning. She quotes that active learning involves instructional activities involving students in doing things and thinking about what they are doing. And on the picture you can see children exploring subtractive color mixing with full physical exertion. I see. This is quite different from teaching and explaining the concept of color mixing by just talking about it. Yes, I have understood that active learning aligns with constructivist learning theory, emphasizing experiential knowledge acquisition over rote memorization. By engaging students in investigative activities, it fosters a deeper understanding of fundamental principles. This approach encourages students to critically analyze information, develop their own insights, and solidify their grasp of the why, behind the what. Absolutely. And to remember, embracing mistakes as learning opportunities rather than avoiding and penalizing them is a key feature of active learning. Right. And when we developed a model of a sustainable building, it was great to experience our teachers change their role from instructor to co-thinkers. And this is not just Alex's impression. There's a robust body of research spanning over three decades that demonstrates the effectiveness of active learning approaches compared to traditional lecture-based methods. For instance, Freeman and colleagues, 2014, specifically analyzed active learning in STEM disciplines. They analyzed 225 studies in a meta-analysis. They found that active learning not only reduces student failure rates but also leads to significant improvements in exam scores and concept comprehension. Notably, the positive impact of active learning appears consistent across various STEM fields. It's important to acknowledge that the effectiveness of specific active learning techniques can vary. While the majority of research focuses on STEM education, there's growing evidence suggesting the benefits of active learning extend to other disciplines as well. This is interesting, but how exactly are these results explained by the researchers? Good question. Lombardi and colleagues present a model for an active learning ecosystem. According to them, active learning goes beyond traditional lecture formats. It engages students directly in the learning process, empowering them to become active participants in their own understanding. This leads to affordances that explicitly focus on students' agency in learning. Yes, and that means that today's teachers are no longer just knowledge deliverers. They're facilitators, creating environments where students actively learn and develop skills with the teacher's support at every step. If you want to learn more about teachers as facilitators, have a look to Module 5. Coming back to Lombardi and colleagues. Two contrasting approaches exist for knowledge construction in undergraduate instruction. The first approach, exemplified by traditional expository lectures, centers on knowledge transmission by the instructor. Students primarily receive pre-constructed scientific explanations and models. Instructors synthesize scientific observations and models, providing explanations and predictions of phenomena alongside domain-specific practices employed by scientists. Through this transmission, the instructor seeks to impart his or her understanding of the scientific process to the students. This is adequate and important for some content teaching, but when it comes to take agency for sustainability and for sustainable development, that is not sufficient. Yes, Thomas, and therefore I will highlight the second approach. This approach is embodied by active learning systems, empowers students to construct knowledge through agency. Students directly engage with observations, data, and scientific models, 
fostering a deeper understanding of phenomena. Active learning environments emphasize the integration of prior experiences with new knowledge. Students' existing knowledge base, including potentially incomplete or inaccurate conceptions, serves as a foundation for building new understanding. This approach acknowledges the range of potentially productive ideas students bring to the classroom, shifting the focus from remediation to building upon existing knowledge structures. I see, active learning shifts a large proportion of activity from the teacher to the learners and students are agents in making sense of domain practices. Data about phenomena. And scientific models. Together with their peers. Students also explicitly consider the science they have personally experienced in an active learning environment. And the teacher acts to facilitate students' sense-making. Given their expert knowledge of science content. Finally, the student self-reflects. On their understanding. Right, that is the model suggested by Lombardi and colleagues. And now collaborative learning comes into play. Active learning fosters knowledge construction through collaborative interactions among students, see Pathway 4 on the slide before. Pioneering work by Piaget and Vygotsky established the value of cooperative learning, where students strive for a shared understanding of a concept. Communication becomes a vital tool in this process. Discussions within collaborative groups allow students to identify discrepancies in their individual understandings and learn from diverse perspectives. This collaborative discourse can lead to three key outcomes, a. Individual knowledge construction by clarifying personal ideas, b. Joint construction of a more comprehensive understanding by combining various perspectives, and c. Ongoing evaluation of individual and collective understanding of the material. Educators have developed a variety of structured activities to promote effective collaborative communication within student groups. These activities are adaptable and can be implemented for learning both fundamental concepts and intricate systems-level phenomena. Oh yes, and in our sustainable schools we experience them very often. I am absolutely convinced that collaboration is a central element of active learning, for my subjects and, most important, for ESD. At our school, we focus on a variety of active learning techniques designed to engage students and promote deeper understanding. These strategies move beyond traditional lecture formats and encourage students to collaborate and to participate actively in their learning. Peer led team learning, similar to problem solving activities, PLTL engages students in working through problems collaboratively. Students take turns explaining concepts and guiding each other towards solutions. Flipped classroom, this approach flips the traditional lecture format. Students engage with pre-recorded lectures outside of class, allowing them to come prepared for in-class activities focused on problem-solving and discussion. Research shows flipped classrooms can improve student learning compared to traditional lectures. Think Pair Share, this technique encourages individual reflection followed by peer discussion. Students first consider a question independently, perhaps jotting down ideas. Then, they pair up to share their thoughts. Finally, select pairs share their insights with the larger group. This can be used to explore topics like the causes of seasons before a lecture. Peer instruction. Students answer multiple choice concept questions using clickers or other tools. These questions target common misconceptions and provide distractor choices. After an initial vote, students discuss their reasoning in small groups before a second vote. This technique, originally developed in physics, has been adopted by other disciplines. Interactive demonstrations. Students predict outcomes of in-class demonstrations and discuss them with peers. Concept mapping. Groups collaborate to create visual diagrams that capture key relationships and processes within a discipline. Concept maps externalize spatial mental models, allowing for shared reflection and correction. Ranking tasks. Students collaborate to order or rank diagrams based on specific features. Here you see an example focusing 10 global challenges. Pause the video and reflect on the following questions, which are the theories, models and activities we take, a, at our school and b, in the classroom, to foster active and collaborative learning? Active and collaborative learning are an essential element of sustainable development goal number four, namely, quality education. For sure, the sustain all schools have adopted these relevant models, methods and activities. But are there also specific aspects for active and collaborative learning in ESD? 
Let us take the sustain all model, active and collaborative learning is implicitly and explicitly included. Active and collaborative learning are key elements in focusing on teaching and learning processes, curriculum development and ESD competences. Maybe I can illustrate an example from the Galileo Primary School. The background to this example was the observation by pupils that a lot of rubbish was being thrown away in the entrance area of the school. In a learning project, they analyzed the rubbish, observed the people passing by, recorded and analyzed data. It turned out that most of the rubbish came from a coffee shop where people go to get a coffee to go and bake goods before going to the tram stop. The school is located between the coffee shop and the tram stop. The students notice that there are significantly fewer rubbish bins on the route between the coffee shop and the tram stop than in the surrounding area. So they summarize their findings, prepared the data and sent it to the city council. The city council then decided that more litter bins should be installed. Now at least this rubbish problem has been solved. This is an example of active, collaborative learning because the pupils identified the problem, researched the background in group work based on division of labor and then processed the results in such a way that they also had an impact in their immediate environment. I think this approach is much more effective than a simple rubbish collection campaign. We pupils were able to make a real contribution here and understood how to obtain information and make decisions based on data. Now again, stop the video and reflect about the following question. How would you implement active, collaborative learning within ESD in your classroom? Find at least three examples. Now, I would like to wrap up. While active learning is a common term in education, it encompasses a wide range of strategies. This lack of specificity makes it difficult for research on effective teaching methods. This module proposes a framework to differentiate within the umbrella term active learning. This framework aims to facilitate the development of school and classroom activities that deepen learning, especially in according to SDG 4. The framework acknowledges the value of lectures, but emphasizes that lectures alone are unlikely to significantly improve student understanding. To be truly effective, Lectures should be integrated with other strategies that promote student agency in knowledge construction. This knowledge construction is a social process involving collaboration and feedback from peers and instructors. It's also a cognitive process that allows students to reflect on their learning. By creating active, collaborative learning environments that foster these elements, education can become more engaging and accessible to a wider range of students, particularly those who have traditionally been underserved by passive learning methods. And again, fostering the green cotton framework, 21st century learning is not possible without active, collaborative learning.